section of the regional coffee charts of the regional coffee charts for the West Sub-Saharan Africa region. Um, the theme for today's um, coffee chat is GIS in business. And if you are here with us today, it means that you are you have a vested interest in knowing how businesses can benefit from the power of GIS, geospatial data and technology. My name is Okwani Kazimkimo. I'm regional ambassador for Sub-Saharan Africa Group of the Women in Geospatial Network. And along with my fellow um, colleagues, I'll say a big thank you to our special guests, Sienna and Aliza, and to all our esteemed participants. We're still waiting for more participants to join. And um, we say a big thank you for you know to all of you for being here. Okay. Yeah. So uh, without further ado, I'll just um, I'll now proceed to introduce Women Plus in Geospatial Network and what we're all about, you know, before we jump straight into the into the conversation. Um, so just a few slides to introduce what we are, who we are, and what the Women in Geospatial Network is about. Yes, so um, we are the Women Plus in Geospatial Network, and we are a global professional network aimed at promoting diversity and gender equality in the geospatial industry and academia. And our mission and vision are here for you all to see. Our mission is to build an inclusive global community, inspiring, uniting, and empowering all women plus or women and under, underrepresented gender groups in the geospatial sector to become strong leaders and change makers. And our vision is forging a geospatial community where all genders can thrive. And um, as of today, we are made up of 3,700 women geospatial plus members that are members of the network. But on social media, we have over 22,500 followers across 91 different countries. <laughs> That's a huge feat, considering that um, we just started in 2019. You know, it all started with a tweet in 2019, just a day before International Women's Day, asking women plus, you know, working in GIS and, and Earth observation to join a Twitter list. Within two days, over 300 women plus joined this list, showing that there is a need for a community like Women Plus in Geospatial. And this is how we all started and today we are here and we are growing, definitely we are growing daily. And we ask you all to join, but then that will come after the end of this session. So we'll tell you how you can join us of them. And okay, so our activities within this network are aimed at inspiring current and future generations of geospatial women and underrepresented gender groups uniting local and global communities together where we build a strong and diverse geospatial community. Also, we are aimed at empowering women and other underrepresented gender groups to grow personally and professionally. And our team at Women Plus in Geospatial is made up of women of strong women that I look up to and also I'm part of them, women that are 12, across 12 nations and from different 10 different countries that live, you know, reside within 10 different countries. And then um, also introducing the African region now. This event was put together by the Sub-Saharan African region of the Women in Gestation Network. And I am an ambassador there along with uh, Nasilele Amatende. She's part of this program also, but at the back end. And we are the Sub Saharan region group of the network, of the global network. And our purpose is to foster individual and collective growth within the Women Plus in Geospatial Network in this part of Africa, that's Sub Saharan Africa. So all these countries here that are represented are part of Sub Saharan Africa. And we are currently 210 members strong and growing. Therefore, we invite every girl 
girl, lady, woman, and other underrepresented gender groups within this space to join the community today if you haven't already. And with that, I'll move straight into today's today's business or let's say business for today and it's basically looking at gis in business gis and its application to business i know some uh, of us here in me? this meeting were familiar with yeah hi Sharon. You me? yeah yeah you are breaking oh my can you hear me So with that, I'll just go ahead. <laughs> so um, moving on to the business for today, like I said, the objective of this event you know, is to bring together experts in the field of GIS, applying GIS to business, where they can talk about their experiences in helping businesses plan their product distribution platforms using GIS and geospatial data. You know, the GIS, application in business is broad as is with every other sector where GIS is used from site selection to customer identification and management. Geospatial data is daily being derived and used in making vital business decisions. In fact, majority of the people handling such processes in organizations are not even GIS experts. Some of them don't even know that they are dealing with GIS data. Yet, without the invaluable locational information gotten from their customers, majority of these organizations cannot function. This is why in recent times, the need for specially aligned customer insights and data significantly drives companies' marketing and sales strategies. Not only this, but even the decision on where to site or locate factories and plants can be more accurately and efficiently determined by GIS. That being said, it has been observed that most people outside the GIS, geospatial community see the products of these processes daily, but do not know the forces responsible for it and the vital role that GIS plays in our society today. And this is the reason why we have brought this event to you and we've invited experts that have been in this sector for a while within Africa that can enlighten us about some of their experiences with helping businesses and some of the benefits that businesses can get when they effectively use professional intelligence. And with that, I'm going to introduce now our panelists, our speakers for today. They are here with us already. Uh, firstly, we have Sienna Lena Williams. She's a UX user researcher at Microsoft, and she's also the co-founder of African Women in Geospatial. African women in GIS. Welcome, Sienna. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yes, well, it's a pleasure, really. And also, we have Aliza Teko. Aliza is GIS expert at Addis Map. He's also an RTM specialist from Addis Ababa. Welcome, Aliza. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. All right. Thank you for being here. Um, this session is moderated by myself, Open, and then um, also my co-ambassador, co she's in the background somewhere. She won't be showing her face much, but she's very much with us. So um, I'll just go on now to read our panelist profiles, if you, don't, if you can permit me. So Sienna, like I said, is currently a UX researcher with Microsoft, focusing on user experience research in software design and development. She's also co-founder of African Women in GIS, along with Chidima Umeogu from Nigeria. Before moving to Microsoft in 2020, she worked as a GIS mapping specialist at Coca-Cola Beverages Africa, Boti Ghana Limited, where she created efficient delivery route maps for product distributors and managed the company's customer geodata. Now, this is something that you will see across the profiles of both of our speakers today. And they have something quite in common, but I'll wait till the end of their presentations to point that out. Utilizing GIS in the company project allowed it to be listed as part of Special Achievements in GIS 2020 every US 
you see award deeds. Thank you, Sienna, for that. <laughs> that was a huge feat. Sienna was also named as one of 50 rising stars of geospatial in February 2021. So you see that she is a force to be reckoned with in Africa there. And, and thank you also for being here with us, like I said already. <laughs> so I'll move on to Aliza now. Aliza has been in GIS, a GIS expert at Team Addis Map since 2009. He's a veteran in this field. Like I said, prior to that, he was in charge of developing RTM maps and procedures for field geodata collection for various clients, including East Africa Botany, Coca-Cola Ethiopia, EBZ Foods, Promastigo, and Alami Industrial Engineering, all in Ethiopia. He is currently in charge of developing a user interface for openplaceguide.org and project management for Yeneguzo all based in Ethiopia. Thank you, Aliza, for being here. And um, just to go on now, I'll hand over the floor to Sienna. Sienna is going to be presenting to us some of our insights in GIS, you know, with the team GIS in business. So I think I'll just uh, hand over the floor now. Go ahead, Sienna. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, let me see if I can share my screen. And please mind you, if you can't hear me, please cut me off and draw my attention. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Uh, you should see an interesting animation of the route. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Yes. So as uh, okay, me mentioned, my name is Yana Williams, and I'm currently a UX researcher. But as you can tell, uh, I have a strong passion for GIS, especially geo business. So I'm really happy to be here today to take you through one of my passion areas of GIS, that is geo business. So the topic for today is uncovering a bit of geo business. That is, I want to create awareness about some of the business applications of GIS. And of course, to start with, I have to introduce myself. Uh, I know some of you do, may not know me, but um, let me see if I can reposition this. Yeah. So a bit about me. Um, prior to high school, I kind of got to know about GIS or basically geography from the textbooks of my brother. Uh, he's five years older than me. So when he was in high school, I was in primary school and I used to be fascinated by his textbooks. So that motivated me to go on to high school to offer this elective that is geography, economics, French and elective mathematics. And moving on, uh, I continued through to university and I offered geography and resource development with psychology. And after this, this was the time of my life where I started asking myself, what am I going to use geography for? So this led me to offer my NSS with the only company I knew at the time that had GIS embedded in their business model. So that was uh, a GIS and software development company called Hansen Geodata Technologies. And as you can see from the picture here, we were developing a system that was uh, for pest and disease management system that had a GIS uh, component embedded in its uh, system. So this is myself and my colleague, and we're trying to do some research to kind of understand how best we can build a product that can help to manage these um, pests that came out uh, at the time. And this was in 2018. And during that year, uh, the reason behind the product was actually to also uh, take part in this competition. That was the Fall Army Web Tech Prize. And this was taking place in uh, Uganda and South Africa. And in South Africa, that was where we had the finals. And by grace, we actually got the third place uh, during my national service, which was a really big fit for our company because it was a startup and it was one of, it was our first win ever. Then after uh, I joined Developers in Vogue, uh, that is a community uh, led by Ivy Bali. She's also in Microsoft. And there I learned the basics of coding, uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. 
And during my journey there, I took part in some volunteering work. Uh, here is me teaching some of my past uh, school uh, students, some foundations in coding. And among this, and I took up other volunteering works that helped me to kind of explore uh, the tech field a bit and understand it more. I also took part in some outreaches. So as you can see here, I'm handing over some maps that my colleague and I did at the time. And I wanted to show these students from one of the high schools in Ghana, some of the things you can do with geography. Because I knew at the time that just like me in high school, we had no idea what to do with geography. The only occupation you could think about was to be a geography student. I'm not saying it's a bad occupation, it's a really awesome and impactful occupation. Just that some of us, uh, someone like me, I'm really shy. So I did not see myself becoming a teacher standing in front of 20 students who might be judging me <laughs> without me knowing. So this was a very, really good time for me to kind of share my experience and also share the possibilities of the geography field. I also grew as a speaker in my journey. Uh, I like to talk about STEM, uh, as, as I said earlier. I also like to talk about GIS, self-development, and personal branding, uh, especially about LinkedIn, which I always encourage people to build their personal brand on because that is where a lot of companies are actually identifying talents from. And also, as most of you know, uh, I co-founded African Women in GIS with Chidi Ma. Uh, we both came together, found ourselves on LinkedIn. And as I keep saying, the fun fact is that we have never ever met each other physically. We have just been in like a virtual relationship throughout. So yes, long distance is interesting. <laughs> And yes, uh, currently I'm a UX researcher at Microsoft. As uh, Okayumi said, I help to build products, uh, trying to help the development teams, PM teams, designers to build their products and actually get users feedback to know if or not these products are the best for them and how to develop it to be the best for them. Okay, so enough about me, let's get right into it. So an introduction to your business. Uh, I know you guys have been hearing this word around a bit. Uh, I also used to hear it a bit. I didn't quite understand it at, the, at first, but I knew it had to do with business. That was, that was enough to, to let me understand it and also uh, accept it. So in simplest terms, it's just the application of GIS and location intelligence in the development of a business. And this is how I like to envision your business. So I like to envision it in a way that GIS being the heart of operations of a business, GIS being the main business, and GIS being a support part of a business. So what I mean by operations or the heart of operations is that the GIS is basically the, the factor that um, the whole business is uh, operating around. So take into consideration an um, example is Uber. So Uber is a taxi hailing app. And as you can tell, the whole business of Uber is based on the map. How best you can get a taxi that is closest to you and actually get it, uh, get an easy way of hailing a taxi without having to struggle and all that. That's the heart of operations that GIS is given to Uber. Now, the main business aspect is when a business is actually offering GIS as a service. So this can take into consideration an example, perfect example is actually Esri. Uh, that is a company that is providing solutions to other companies to actually use in their operations. And that's the main part of geo business. Then we also have support. So in support, that is where you can see, uh, as an example, I'll be taking you through it uh, later on, where I'll take you through, um, that's actually <laughs> RTM. Uh, in my former workplace, it was basically the RTM department that I was a part of, and I was applying GIS to the department. So that is a part of support that is in terms of, let's say, distribution. Uh, you can tell that you use maps to kind of support the operations of distribution and supply chain management. So that is the three ways that I usually envision geo business. Moving on, I'd like to talk about some of the applications that's at the heart of this discussion. So first off, I'd like to start with research because, well, I'm a researcher and I have come to understand the really important aspects of research, especially in relation to GIS and basically all around. So if you're starting a business, definitely they always tell you to do what? The first thing is to do your research. And in this, you have to identify your target market. You have to identify 
um, certain things as in the projects, the products that you think your target market would like, and then to do further research to know if or not it's it is okay for your target market. Yeah, well, uh, in terms of GIS in that research and development phase, you would also have to identify how does their location influence their movements and behaviors. I once wrote an article about um, the basic location intelligence application of street hawkers in Ghana. This came to me one time on my way to work when I noticed that there were different products that were sold during the day and there were different products that were sold during the night. So I came to understand that it could be because of the influence of behaviors and movements of people. So you find yourself um, seeing a lot of street hawkers during the daytime moving towards the center of the city and you find a lot of street hawkers during the night time moving uh, to the part of the streets that leads people away from the city. So that is one way of using research and this can be something that someone has observed and that's a, it's also a form of research observing and this was how they were able to adjust to know that okay during the daytime people would want breakfast so I can sell breakfast during the night time people would want light snacks so I can sell light snacks. So this is all part of application of GIS and geothinking in their business strategy. And that brings me to marketing. So a part of marketing that I really, really find intriguing and a bit scary is geocoding applications of marketing that includes geotargeting. So geotargeting is basically the fact that um, people are able to identify you wherever you are in whichever location you are. And it's like they can uh, package specific deals and specific advertisements to a specific niche based on your location or based on your demographics. So this is basically uh, bringing us to one example that is target messaging. So here is a form of using geotargeting where um, I don't know if some of you have seen those notifications on uh, especially on Google that you'll be passing by a shop and let's say you pass a bit above uh, out of the shop's uh, radios and you get an alert that oh the shop is offering this um, service or this or this deal so this is an example that i decided to portray here in this image that you might be passing by a shop and you get oh shopping deal there's a discount 50 percent discount it's a way of applying gis and location intelligence to kind of target the right niche and of course you're not so far from the store so you'll be forced to to go back so this is a form of marketing that is really really good and is very easy to target people and this is also because like this is why some people mention the the the, the parts of uh, your location settings on your phone this is what allows people to be able to target you with these markets and these marketing messages another part of it is location and demographics um, if you're doing marketing you are definitely thinking about your niche your market niche. And in thinking about your market niche, you're thinking about demographics. So who do you want to target? Do you want to target uh, the young people, maybe from 18 to 34? Where are those people usually found? Okay, from 18 to 24, you might find them mostly in schools. So you might be targeting maybe areas that have schools in that vicinity. You might be targeting, let's say, tertiary institutions. So you go to the areas of tertiary institutions. Those who are in Ghana, you know, University of Ghana is a very hot spot for a lot of businesses when they want to target students. And it's really good when you have all these areas mapped out. I also did a research that looked at urban sprawl, that is the expansion of cities into the outskirts or the peri urbans. And in this, if you're someone who is, let's say, into um, real estate, this is a really good way to do site selection. I saw that in your presentation of Pay Me. That was a really good addition. And yes, site selection for real estate is really crucial in applying GIS. And this can help you to know exactly where to base your business. This kind of thinking is also used in banks where they think about where to even place their ATMs and thinking about, okay, most uh, majority of the people who might utilize, let's say, um, this service, that is, let's say, SUSU. In Ghana, we have a system called SUSU where they save very little money over a period of time, and it's usually used by um, small business owners. So if you are an, a, a bank that can offer such a service, you will be geared towards uh, placing your branches or little stores that might collect that amount of money in areas like the markets. Um, the very little, uh, the very small areas or the very uh, the slum areas that you have a lot of small businesses. So these are some of the thinking and some of the, the applications of geothinking and geography in your business um, marketing uh, strategies. And yes, 
Next, I would like to talk about is uh, where I worked previously. I did not include it in my introduction because I wanted to bring the full story here. And in operations, uh, this is an example of my former company. But before that, I'd like to just give a, a very good example about other companies that are using it in their operations. So as I mentioned earlier, the different ways in which I envision dual business being applied is um, in the heart of the operations as a main business and also as a support. So over here in the heart of operations, you can see that um, companies like Uber, Airbnb, and in my local vicinity, the post office, these are the systems that they use to really be the heart of operations. They can't operate without the use of a map. So that is where you can see the, the play of location intelligence. And with this, they kind of gather geo data and use that geo data to make projections to help them to make their services much better. Now, I would like to bring us down to what we mostly know. So there is this industry, and I'm sure my, my co-panelist uh, uh, knows this very, very well because we've worked in a similar company. So that is the fast moving consumer goods and FMCG for short. And here I would like to talk about it in terms of supply chain and distribution. So this was the work I was actually taken up back in uh, Volta, Ghana. And over here, you have to think about a company's needs and what they want to achieve in the long run. So the basis of the product uh, of the projects we wanted to do was just to cut down costs, create efficiency, and create speed. And of course, in a country like Ghana that has serious traffic, it's very difficult to achieve the speed part but we tried our best to make it as efficient as possible to help the business to grow and to operate on its own. So in addition to the project that they wanted to uh, kind of roll out, we had to use GIS to kind of uh, segment the customer geo data to understand it and to also work on it. And in doing that, I'd like to give an example over here. And this is a map of an example of how you can potentially apply GIS in an FMCG business. And because I sometimes have an issue with this map, I decided to open it up here. So here I have already opened up uh, an example of a pseudo map. So please mind you, the data is not real. And I must add that every uh, business data is confidential. So no matter where you're working, please make sure you do not show that company's data unless they have made it public. In addition to that, this is an example of what you can achieve with your data. So once you take the initiation, to start off, you have to ask the business, what is it that they want to achieve? If they want to achieve efficient distribution, then you'd have to go up, go the next level as to understand what kind of factors would they want to have in, as part of their data to analyze in the long run. And uh, the details are kind of like the volume as to how much a person would like to buy, uh, how much the person buys in a week, in a month, or all that. You'd have to understand the quantity and also the volume. And in this, you can go ahead to create your forms to collect the data. And in collecting the data, you have to make sure that you collect it very efficiently and make sure that the accuracy is on point to get the exact location of the customer. This is something you have to train the, sorry, am I getting background sound? Sorry, I think I'm getting background sound. No, you're just fine, just go ahead. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yes, so as I was saying earlier, um, you will have to get the exact location of the customer. And in doing that, you have to train your data collectors to collect the exact location. So that the accuracy has to be less than three meters if you can. So you have to give them very good uh, gadgets that can collect that accuracy or that accurate data. The reason why I stress on this is because in the, in the long run, when you're trying to create, let's say boundaries or routes, you will need the accuracy because if the point is in the middle of the road, it becomes very difficult to position whether it should be on the right or on the left. So you have to have the accuracy really on point so that the, 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 the drivers or the distributors who are going out to maybe supply can easily supply without any hiccup. So that is an, ex, uh, an example. And over here, I just wanted to showcase how you could visualize your data. So let's say you are a manager of the projects for distribution and you want to kind of explain to your boss about the quantity, uh, the quantity, uh, let me say, the spread in terms of your 
boundaries or in terms of your territories. So here you can have an example that you have your boundaries uh, mapped out and you have the locations of each of the customers. And you can also visualize it in terms of whichever attributes in the data that you want to visualize it in. So over here, as an example, I decided to visualize it using the volume data. So as you can see, the higher volume data on the right side is portrayed as a larger marker. And this is a very surface level of just visualizing your data. So another factor is to visualize the data in different ways that can make it very easy to make business decisions. So once you make it really easy to visualize and make decisions for the business, you then tend to understand the use of GIS and actually exploit more and apply it in their businesses going forward. So this is just an example, moving on. Now, I'd just like to give an example of some of the business benefits or some of the benefits of applying GIS in your business. So as I mentioned earlier, you have efficient marketing strategies and execution. You have low cost of operations because you have a much efficient manner of, let's say, if you want to do your distribution, if you want to build your estate, it's very easy because you have done the homework, you have done the research, and you have done the, the marketing strategies in addition. You are also able to make business projections because the data you collect can actually be analyzed over time to create projections, potential projections that can also influence the next stage of your business. And in doing so, of course, you get much larger profits and you can definitely, definitely uh, benefit from this in the long run. So I will just like to end by saying that location is the heart of business development and efficiency. Thus, GIS or location intelligence is crucial for the sustainable business success. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and I hope you learned something. Any questions? Thank you, Sienna. Um, I'm sure questions will be coming shortly. Um, okay. Participants, um, if you want to ask Sienna a question based on our presentation, you can just drop the questions in the chat. Once Aliza is done with his presentation, then we'll go ahead and answer all those questions in the Q&A session. All right, so um, without further ado, I'll just pass on the button to Aliza Tepler, who is going to be presenting his own experiences uh, with GIS in business. Over to you, Aliza. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Tiana, that was a very impressive, I want to say first, that was a very impressive presentation. And yeah, that was really nice work you did. And yeah, I've already captured some really important points that uh, we really need to work on, like some really nice ideas based on that. So, okay, uh, to introduce myself, uh, my name is Alazar Takley and I am currently working for Addis Map, but before all of that, I was working for uh, an NGO. I was a community development worker after uh, fi finishing my uh, IT or computer science education at uh, Adama University. Uh, the next phase was since uh, the university was dedicated for uh, teachers training, I didn't want to take that route uh, because of the uh, in environment of that uh, sector in our country. Yeah, it was not that very um, uh, motivating or it's not that interesting sector when it comes to Ethiopia during then. But after that, I started community work when a couple of my friends were working on some open sigma project. And yeah, they were trying to implement an open source mapping and hence it was just a basic mapping uh, project they were implementing on that. And that's how I get started or inter got introduced to the GIS. And afterwards we started working on that part and to sustain that project, we were thinking of on how to apply that data in just, not just by sh sharing it to OpenStreetMap or as open source community, rather, we were also thinking of how to apply it in a way to create a community that would be large enough to do uh, mapping all over Ethiopia. So that's how Addis Map and the business side of it was born. So uh, let me, <clears throat> let me, yeah, okay. Let me share my screen. Uh, so let me, uh, can you hear, can you see my screen right now? Okay. Yes, 
Well, we can see your screen. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's how it started. And back then, uh, we weren't really specifically talk, uh, doing this RTM and we were not that familiar on how to apply it directly to a business or a consumer sector, uh, as you, as uh, Tiana said initially, but we were thinking of uh, mapping out different industries, uh, putting, putting them on a website or a directory type of uh, application. And that's how it all started. And after that, uh, Coca-Cola, the, the main, I mean, our, one of the main uh, factors or one of the main reasons we got, we got into the business side of GIS, specifically RTM and this uh, dealer surveys was because of Coca-Cola. And back then they were doing some uh, survey. They want to expand in Ethiopia and they want to see what the compet competition was like uh, because there was uh, Pepsi and uh, Mirinda was having a high sales uh, back then. It was around eight, seven years ago, nine years ago. So they approached us because we had uh, the Addismap website up and running. There was some data on that. Uh, that was a bit, okay, better than what Google was offering and uh, what other resources or even the Ethiopian mapping agency was, was offering. So they told us that they've been in contact with the government, but acquiring the data was difficult. So they just want us to do the mapping part, like to support them in collecting the data. Because uh, during then they already have a specialized marketing team that will do the analysis and stuff like that. So they were mainly focused on the data. So, okay, we say we agreed. And finally, it was really funny because there weren't that many, uh, specific devices that were readily available in Ethiopia and smartphones were not that uh, accessible here. Uh, most importantly, not to the, actually not to the worker class, at least. So what they were- Hi, uh, Okay. Sorry, Hi. sorry to cut you short, but uh, what you're presenting, it's not the document you're talking about. Uh, we can only see your Windows Explorer. Look at you, you should share the screen with us. How about now? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yes, we see it now. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I really apologize. I haven't noticed that actually. Uh, okay. It's kind. My internet is kind of lagging. Uh, I think. Mm. Okay. So. Okay. <clears throat> so. Uh, back then, since there weren't there that many uh, portable devices, what we started off was with this Garmin, uh, small GP, uh, navigation devices. They were mainly used for navigation, not data collection, no field work. So we improvised and we used those uh, devices in conjunction with uh, a printed uh, form that the field workers were uh, taking from place to place. So what they do is, uh, collect the geodata with the Garmin and the rest of the data, like uh, what kind of, uh, I mean, they go from shop to shop, uh, school, each and every outlet that possibly sells any kind of beverages. That was the main focus. So we had shops targeted, we had school cafeterias, hotels, uh, government cafeterias, uh, various sectors that was targeted uh, by Coca-Cola. So what we did was we went, we collected all the data, any type of beverages they sell, uh, the frequency of delivery from the manufacturers or from the distributors to that outlet and the amount of uh, stock they hold and also the amount of sales per week. So we collected all of that and it was a very uh, labor intensive work. And what happened was we gave them that manual data, they synchronized it, uh, they downloaded that data into, uh, converted it into Excel sheet. And the next was uh, downloading the Garmin data and we 
help them into editing it by using uh, Java OpenStreetMap editor. It was uh, an open source software that was freely available back then. And we forward the data for them. So what they did is they not they didn't necessarily use the geodata directly, but what they did was they uh, ca um, they categorized all the sectors uh, that was uh, collected, all the formats that was collected, and uh, they somehow they were doing it manually, like they were reading all uh, by Wereda and by subcity. So it was not directly geo codings or the, um, specific locations they were uh, targeting. They were doing it Wereda by Wereda because that was the lowest address. Sorry, we lost you, Aliza. I think your network has gone really bad. Okay, so we lost, we lost Aliza, unfortunately. Um, you'll be joining us soon, but while he's joining, I think we have a few questions for Sienna. So maybe we should just take Sienna's questions now. Um, get, Daniel in the chat said, based on our experience, okay, oh, we have Aliza back now. <laughs> Aliza, we lost you a bit there. Can you hear me? Your audio is not really good. There's something wrong with the audio. Aliza, are you saying something? Because we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you, unfortunately. I don't know, is it just from my end or can anybody hear Aliza? No. no. If you try um, joining again, because we really are enjoying your conversation, so you should just try to um, join, rejoin. Okay, so while we are waiting for Aliza to um, come back online, I would like to um, welcome some of our new newly joined participants. I see that people, more people have joined. Welcome to the event. Um, so far, Sienna has presented, and we are currently on the second speaker, Aliza. He is presenting his experience using GIS in business in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Unfortunately, his network is really crappy. So we'll just um, go ahead now to some of the questions that uh, have been dropped for Sienna, and she'll probably just answer that now. So like I was saying, um, Daniel in the chat asked the question that, based on her experience working with GIS in Ghana, what areas of GIS does she believe need attention in Ghana's business industry? And is is it used enough by companies to make business decisions? Over to you, Sian. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think the question was a bit confusing, but I think you mean uh, how businesses, uh, whether or not businesses are utilizing GIS and um, is, it, is it used enough to make business decisions? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, unfortunately, not really. A lot of people do not know about GIS, unfortunately. So the awareness level is really low. And even in the company that I was working in, if it wasn't for the fact that, uh, as uh, Aliza said, Coca-Cola requested for it, they would not have um, implemented uh, using GIS into the operations. So you can tell that a lot of uh, local businesses have no idea about GIS. However, it's just picking up a bit. Uh, like, I don't want to say luckily, but 
the side effects of the COVID, uh, COVID-19 has kind of exposed to people the awareness and the importance of using location intelligence to help understand prog- uh, problems and also to implement strategies. So hopefully uh, people have understood, but they have understood it in terms of the government utilizing it in their operations and in their development projects. However, for businesses to actually implement it, it's just a few private ones that understand the need and are actually using it. So I usually try to tell the people who have worked under me and people who I mentor that wherever you are, it's kind of like part of your plan to also create that awareness of the field GIS and let them understand the importance, create projects on the side to show to them the benefits that can be um, enjoyed by the company so that they can see the reasons why they should take it out. Businessmen are only interested in what can help them to increase profits and reduce cost. So once you're able to sell that idea really well to them, I think they'll actually like to hear more and pick it up and test it out. Once it works well, they'll definitely take it up and it's with word of mouth, it keeps traveling to other people as well. So we definitely do need to do a, a, a bit more in terms of um, creating awareness. But I do know that some companies have taken up GIS as part of uh, supports in their operations as well. Thank you so much for that question, um, for that answer, Sienna. And um, I would even like to add that, like you said, a lot of people don't know much about GIS. But unfortunately, they don't know that a lot of the products, especially from multinationals now, a lot of the products that they use get to their hands through the power of GIS. And I think um, as geospatial um, professionals in Africa, one way that we can sell the idea of GIS, like you said, is to um, help people understand that this thing is actually here with you. And even businessmen and, and so on, when you give them the idea of, oh, do you know that the company as big as Coca-Cola, which is, I think Coca-Cola is like pioneering the use of GIS in business if I do say so myself, because I'm in Nigeria and I also worked on an RTM team. And that's how I got to know about applying GIS in business and also Aliza and you, Sienna. So we could just say that they are, they are you know, they are pioneering the, the use of GIS in business, but then other businesses could also take this up because I know here in, in, here in Nigeria, other multi, multinational companies based here are also taking up the RTM routes, you know, for their distribution and logistics. And then if it's one way to sell it to local businesses, although you know they might be thinking about the costs and um, like, oh, it's too foreign to them. But when you can um, adequately portray the benefits that these big companies get from it and try to downscale it to their small businesses, even like you said, the orcas and, and all in Ghana, even a businesswoman as you know, as small scale as an orca can use the power of geospatial intelligence. And that's a way to preach the GIS gospel here in Africa. And that's really why we brought up this uh, this theme. And I think it's something that we can talk more about here in, in Africa and hopefully sell the GIS idea, you know, from here even to other aspects. Although GIS is currently being used, you know, by some NGOs for, you know, environmental sustainability, SDGs and all. You know, you and stuff. But then we people, yeah, we locals, like it touches each and every one of us. And and that's when we can really grow the industry in Africa. Mm. Yeah, so that's really a good answer, Sienna. Thank so, you. Um, Thank you for your answer too. <laughs> of course, you inspired this answer. And and I think um most of us have this this line of thinking already. Right? We just need to say more about it, you know. So um, I think we're still waiting for Aliza to join. But just so we don't delay, uh, it's a coffee chat anyway. So I think we should just ask, based on Sienna's presentation, I think we have it also in the coffee chat already. So based on our presentation, we could just you know, discuss you know, some of the things around this topic and just you know, grab a cup of coffee and discuss. I, I actually have a couple of questions. And uh, although your presentation covered a lot, so I think I'll just drop some of my questions here so we can talk more about that. So um, you said a lot of things, you know, about um, geocoding and geotargeting in business. And even you said it was scary, and I, even I said oh, yeah. it was scary because, yes, because, you know, this is where 
you know, companies like the giants, you know, they, you know, you see those ads and you be like, well, I was just thinking about this thing and I see it. And it's like, they know what you're thinking. And people don't know this is giants at, at work. You know, how do you see that playing out in Africa? How do you see, like, imagine like a local business, you know, and they're able to, you know, have that power to do this targeted ads and all. How do you see that playing out in Africa? Because I think we can get there once most of us know about it, you know? Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, so ideally, some of the small businesses are utilizing the telecom communications companies to kind of do their marketing, target marketing. So that is one way of uh, the small businesses utilizing um, some form of technology to do their marketing. However, in terms of the geo-targeting and all that, uh, it, is, it is possible for it to be used, just that right now people are becoming more concerned about privacy issues and therefore it's a bit of a dicey um, model to implement in your business. However, once you get the, the consent of the user and the, the user has read the lies, the policies and all that, which I know most people don't read, uh, <laughs> they, they are able to get access to your data and just use it for those purposes only. They just have to be very mindful to keep the data really, really confidential and really safe and don't use it for any other item. They also need to be very careful with uh, personal identification details, uh, PII. Uh, those are the kind of details that you need to um, remove from your data in order to help keep that privacy uh, um, policy. So there are certain things that you uh, businesses will have to be mindful of. Um, I, when I was in my former company, I tried to let them know that like the data we have collected, the average guy did not understand that it's quite harmful but we need to be um, responsible enough to understand that this is actual data that can be harmful. Therefore, we need to be responsible to keep it safe and to keep it confidential. So once um, we, whilst we are implementing all these strategies and these um, models for companies, we need to also keep in mind the privacy concerns. Even though the average Ghanaian or the average person might not understand it, it's also good to practice it so that it becomes a norm and we become safe and help each other um, keep safe. We keep the customer safe as well. So that shows that we have the customer at heart and being them being the heart of your operations is something that can help you really well. Yeah. That's a really good answer, Sienna. And um, Thank you. Like, like you said, somebody is also asking again that, um, could you elaborate a bit more on the telecoms using GIS form? markets and for target marketing i think would be mm. yeah mm. yeah um the telecoms using target market um uh it it has to do with when you're registering okay so in ghana they made us register our telephone numbers all over again and the the, the registration had the our locations uh our location data in addition to our our basic data that's like your name your email um, and everything. So in that kind of data, it becomes very crucial. And if a company comes to them and says, maybe um, I want to target students or I want to target young people, it's very easy for them to do that target messaging. It doesn't necessarily use location, but it uses more of demographics. So that is one way that telecommunications can actually do that uh, form of message marketing that you usually see on your phones. But uh, I know for, for a fact that they keep the data very confidential and they're very um, keen on making sure that um, it doesn't go overused and all that. And to some extent, uh, people utilize the services when they get the links. Some people click on it and actually use what has been marketed to them. So in a way, it's kind of like a win-win situation but we just have to bear in mind that uh, you have to be very mindful of people's uh, per personal data. The, the success of that type of marketing, I was arguing with a colleague the other day, and, and mm. in my opinion, considering how much this business is spent on that type of marketing and compare it to um, how many clicks actually they get, mm. I don't know if it's so, you know, if, if, if 
make it so profitable for them if they are not making mm. losses. But then you keep seeing these things and, and maybe it's like a trend that they all feel they have to be part of. Mm. But I feel that using proper, you know, customer data, like using proper like RTM methods, I feel have more effect, you know, in, in, um, in allocating these their resources than just spending money on those types of ad marketing. Because even me, in my opinion, Sometimes when I see that those ads, I just get pissed and I'm, I'm just off the site, you know? Mm. And I feel a lot of people do this, although maybe some people will click on the link unknowingly and yeah. they'll get their clicks, but then I don't know if it's so successful. But that's a side. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, on on that topic is very true. Uh, it's very difficult to know how successful it is. However, one thing I've seen as a trend is that they do more of awareness marketing. So in that form, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be that a person will click on a link or something, but the person will be conscious of the fact that there is a company or a business that is providing this service or this product. So that is one way I think they feel is beneficial to them. And also um, in terms of it being successful, uh, it, it depends because um, it depends on the business that is utilizing that platform. There are some businesses that would definitely benefit in utilizing such a strategy. So something like a food business, everybody needs food, everybody is hungry. So for such a platform, it's actually beneficial for, for a food business to utilize that method. But if let's say you offer um, something that is very easy for someone to do, uh, I'm thinking of I'm trying to think of it's one. Nervous. Or like a game, let's say you want to advertise a game, that is not a good platform for you. So you have to think about the kind of business you have and really think through as to where people are most likely to interact with your type of product or service. And that can help you to better make the right decision. So the businesses that just blindly go into that sort of marketing strategy is, is a very bad move. You would need to properly think about where your your um your demo, your niche is and the kind of things that they like to do so that's why i mentioned behavioral um analysis that's behavioral research so this comes back to even user experience research where you have to make sure that you understand your user and understand um the basic activities or the basic uh behaviors of your user to know how to target your user and when and where and also their yes and, also and where also yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and um, okay, yeah. moving on now, I'd like to ask a more technical question for us, like for we in the GIS or geospatial sector. You know, GIS in environment or GIS in earth observations are totally different from GIS in business, you know. So I wanted to ask, what were the tools that, that you, you feel must be in place for the application of GIS in business? Like, okay, for example, now in the, in the business itself, what do you think they need to have in place? Because from my experience, even in my RTM team, some, some RTM teams that I belong to in Nigeria here, some of them don't even know. They're in RTM teams, but they don't know that they're working with GIS data or GIS itself. They sort of have found a way to use Excel and just normal data analysis you know, technologies rather than geospatial data analysis, you understand? And they seem to be like very comfortable there. Whereas I'm thinking to myself, there are so many software like GIS, you know, geospatially inclined data analysis software that you can use to improve on the processes that you're doing. And, and they were just so ignorant to this. And I was, I was even, and that's why I said earlier, most businesses use geospatial data, but they don't know that it's geospatial data they are using. And they don't know mm. that it would be better if you went through a geospatial analysis route than just data analysis route. You understand? Mm -hmm. Like a process, like a process, like that you could just do in ten minutes on QGIS. They use hours and days on normal Excel, and you know. So I wanted to ask, like, back to my question now. What are the tools that you think the business should put in place, like a normal? successful RTMT should have technical tools mm. now, do you understand? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, first of all, you need to know the goal of the projects that you want to do. That is what will help influence what kind of tools you'd want to use. 
So if the goal is to have the data of your customers and to know their exact location, then you would need a data collection tool as your first tool. And there are a lot of data collection tools. Um, in my former company, we used the survey one, two, three. Uh, there are others. You can also utilize um, normal, what's it called? A normal form. Just that if you're using, let's say, Microsoft Forms or any other form, you might have to include a field in the form that will help you to collect the location data. So you would need something that can help you gather the GPS location, that is the latitude or longitude, and then include that in the form if you're collecting it. Because at the end of the day, when you extract or export the form into Excel and you save it into CSV, and you have that field for X and Y, once you, in, uh, you upload it onto, let's say, QGIS, which is a free software, it's very easy for you to visualize it. It's low cost. You would not have to spend so much because just that it will be a lot of, uh, it will be a bit laborious to kind of always input the latitude and longitude for, for a, a lot of data. So I would, I would recommend that if it is a large company and you want a lot of data, a large number of data, you will need to uh, utilize uh, some of these softwares that can collect the exact location. And in doing that, you have to train your data collectors to collect the exact accurate data, as I mentioned earlier, not more than three meters to get the accurate, uh, the accuracy level. And um, I wanted to mention something earlier that uh, in our former company, we had to work with about, we had to collect over 80,000 location points. So imagine such a large number, you cannot utilize uh, forms. You would have to use a, a software that can help you collect the exact points if it, uh, very well, and also to uh, collect a large number at a go or let's say in a day. So that is one thing you need a data collection tool. The second thing you need is a data, a data visualization tool. And that is where QGIS can come in if you want to save costs. But if you want to go large and maybe have a lot of analysis uh, capabilities and even have a dashboard and everything to visualize it in real time. So let's see if the people are collecting the data, there should be like a back end link to. So I know Esri has this, that's Actin's dashboard. So you can link survey one to three to access dashboard where you can connect and then you can visualize the points as and when people are uploading the points. So if your data collectors are in the field, it's very easy for you to visualize how they're collecting the data. If there's a problem, you can call them and ask them to fix it. So that is one way of making sure that you collect uh, the accurate data and very good quality data. But of course, data is never clean. So you'd have to clean the data after it has been collected. And that is where you need uh, a lot of hands-on work. Um, you can utilize, again, QGIS or Actis or any other platform that you can afford to clean your data. And after you, depending on what the business wants to achieve, if they want to build boundaries, you need to know the factors that you need to kind of build up boundaries. If it is per volume that of their products uh, from the data you've collected, or if it is per, let's say, a, a normal location. So let's say they want to utilize the normal district boundaries or regional boundaries, then that is very easy. You already have that data free online. So you can just download that and then create that analysis using the GIS software. However, that will be a, that can also make it easier with Excel. Excel is not a, a very bad um, platform to use for that, but it's only a bit difficult if you want certain, um, uh, let me say, certain, how, how should I put it? <laughs> a particular form of, um, let's say, the, uh, the division of uh, your, your data, your customer data. So in our case, I had to manually kind of look for a very good boundary based on the uh, volume that it gave me. And in doing so, I had to be very mindful of, let's say, the road network I'm using. I had to be mindful of, let's say, rivers in that path, uh, in that road. Like I had to be very mindful of so many factors while I was creating boundaries. So for such an ask, you cannot use Excel for that. You can only use the software, the GIS software, to extract data from that kind of 
ask that they are looking for, and then the data scientists can further work on that data depending on what they want to achieve. So you definitely need to understand very well clearly what the business wants to achieve, and then that can help you to choose the right tools and the right softwares and procedures and methods to use to analyze your data and to create the solution for them. Well said, Sienna. And um, like you said, Excel is a really good uh, software to use because it's all data and Excel is like one of the most powerful data analysis. I wasn't saying that because I'm working for Microsoft, it's just a really good <laughs> software. <laughs> I know, I know that. Like, okay, yeah, we all know Excel is like a, the giant mm. data analysis software, but in terms of geospatial data, and like you rightly said, the process I was that I had in mind when I used that example was actually when you want to um, delineate the territory or boundary mm -hmm. for the customers, bearing in mind their volume, target, and, and the number of customers. You know, you could just use the clip tool, which will give you the number, all you, the numbers you want. And it was just yeah. so fast, you know? And um, that was just what I had in mind. But then, yeah. well said. Yeah, well said, definitely. So um, I think we'll just go ahead now and invite Aliza in. He's back and hopefully his network is much better now. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm sorry for hi, the- Hi, Aliza. Okay, can you hear me now? Is it, uh, is my voice clear and everything? Yes, much better, much better. Oh, great, great, okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, should we just uh, just directly go to the from where we left off? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, well, after we have, uh, now we have about uh, now we have about ten more minutes in your presentation. So uh, just sorry? bear that in mind. I said now we have about ten minutes in your presentation because time is fast spent now. So okay. um, if you could just yes, in 10 I'll minutes. just quickly summarize and yeah. Yes. Uh, so yeah. Fast forward from uh, the Coca-Cola project to now, uh, even as I was hearing back in the question and answer discussion, yeah, we we moved from Excel sheet after finalizing the Coca project, we moved to the um, collected the Excel sheet and started experimenting on QGs, QGS, and so right now what we're doing is uh, we're developing, we're collecting data with Cobo Collect. It's an, also an open source and. Then we, tra we transfer it to QGIS, process it there, and however, whatever type of standard format they want, our customers want, we transfer that uh, to the customer. And also we do the QGIS server implementation on their servers if uh, they are requiring that, because that's the cheapest way to serve our customers. And we can also ask them to use QGIS, uh, ArcGIS, but that's really, uh, that comes with a hefty price and especially for a country that's not very um, convinced on GIS in business. Uh, our the best way we found was focusing on open source uh, data and systems. So yeah, afterwards that's uh, how we are doing it for, for right now. And as I have as, as we start stated in the introduction, right now we are, we already did a uh, data collection and RTM for uh, Alami Industrial Engineering, one of the last clients uh, in the last fiscal year. And what we did was we just collected Cobra Collect and uh, start visualization and uh, Q, uh, for QG, with QGIS and the data collection with Cobo. So that way we were able to do a lot of data collection and we were also able to train them better to implement it in-house and use it for any newcomer uh, employee. And apart from that, one of our main projects, uh, IDSMAP, uh, it's a web uh, system, but right now what we're doing is uh, it's an outdated, uh, it has an outdated business model or use case. So what we're right, trying to do right now is instead of just uh, advertising our customers or businesses on a website, we are transferring to an open source type of IDSMAP we're currently building and that will allow different businesses in any uh, country or in any town, whether it's in Ethiopia or anywhere in Africa, to just copy a small um, uh, service worker type of uh, script and generate a similar business page uh, using their own data. So we will share that we share the code as open source so people, any developer can 
implement it or freely con con contribute towards uh, pro developing it into a further usable use case. And also, any user can add a different layer, like using JavaScript or any technique, any uh, simple uh, script languages. They can add layers of businesses or different uh, functions or features they want to see on that specific page. So this is what we're uh, focusing right now, like converting Addis Map into an open source project. So it can uh, be expanded throughout Africa, and yeah, uh, people can people without or teams without a uh, huge technical skill can have a visualization or some type of system that resembles that. And the other is Yaneguzo. It's a trip planner. It's also an open source project. Uh, we are currently doing with uh, uh, an open source software. It's uh, a, a branch of Trufi. It's uh, right now implemented in about three or four African countries. Uh, there's also one in Ghana. Ghana, I think it's called Trotro or something like that. So. We're implementing that as an open source, and that's one of the use cases we found for GIS. And it's not just uh, RTM right now. We, uh, even though RTM is the main uh, sector that uh, will transform this manufacturing and uh, huge industries, we're also trying to involve the public by giving them what they can relate to. So through these public uh, trip applications, they can understand better what the uh, use of maps is, and they can once they start implementing in, in, in their daily life, it's easier for us to expand the community that maps uh, their community, their villages, any interesting features they see wherever they go. So that way, we are trying to expand the mapping industry in Ethiopia too. And one of our proudest products is this uh, PPDU project, which uh, happened as a result of our open source contribution. Uh, we were introduced this to a French company that was working on, in consultation with the P ECOWAS PPDU project. And we were able to provide them with this user interface and with the data uh, extraction. What we did was we used satellite images from Bing and OpenSitMap. And also some of uh, the data was traced on paper and they shared that images with high resolution. And we came up with uh, basic rough data so it can be easier for visualization. That way, their on-ground people in each uh, country, they were able to send their people with GPS and further work on that. So uh, basically that's uh, what we are doing to, to G, what we are using GIS uh, in terms of business. So this is not just the only use case, but there are different sectors we can uh, apply it to. Like, uh, for example, one of the things we were able to provide the government was initially during our start, uh, we gave the city administration a tour map so that it can be it's easier to, uh, to to develop or like to do to, tour guides and it's easier for them. So they can share that data with businesses. That's one of the things. And yeah, there are various use cases right now. And what we're pushing more on is getting the data out there, op make it open source. And apart from specific customer data, the map, the location system, all the technology needs to be open source. And we're right now working with um, this use mappers chapter in some universities like uh, Bahardar, Addis Ababa University, and there are small teams uh, outside Addis Ababa. And we're currently trying to develop uh, a very uh, small um, case study using ArcGIS server and ArcGIS desktop. So that's that way we can at least we can uh, train university students. They can it's easier to implement, and that way they can develop their own softwares based on the experience gained on that. So, uh, so for us, that's, uh, I think that summarizes what we're doing uh, in here in Ethiopia. And yeah, thank well, you. Thank you. Right. thank you so much, Alisa. Thank you for the presentation and the story. You had to go through so much. So uh, yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, so um, based on what you said, yeah, so based on what you said, I think we have some some uh, comments in the chat. Uh, somebody asked, I think, uh, somebody said, okay, Mary now, she said, um, 
has re- she has not tried to use QGIS before. So what other open source applications apart from QGIS and ArcGIS do you suggest for businesses? I think that's a question. Uh, so I think uh, Aliza could uh, help answer that. Okay. Okay. Well, when we started, we weren't that familiar with QGIS either. But uh, if it is directly just mapping, geotagging, or categorizing the geodata that is collected, there is also another application called Java OpenStreetMap Editor. It's open source, and it, it's uh, basically it's installable on desktop or you can also directly go to OpenStreetMap if they have an online data editing software with visualization and also with uh, AI supported uh, satellite imagery mapping. So right now, I mean, back when we started, there weren't that many uh, choices, but right now, if you're not very familiar with QGIS, you can start with these two. These are the basic uh, editing tools. So simply you just collect whatever data you want, uh, whether using your Android phone, using Cobo Collect, or if it's a geotagged image, you can import it on the direct, on the browser editor or by installing this Java of JOSM or Java Prisma editor. And that's a very user-friendly, beginner-friendly, and there are various tutorials directly on the OpenStreetMap wiki. So I think people usually focus on Google Map, but uh, to be uh, to really uh, understand the mapping, the science, and to start from a basic level, it's much easier to go into OpenStreetMap. That's uh, it has a, it's rich in resources. So yeah, you can refer to that. Thank you so much, Alison, for that answer. Uh, I think there are no, there are no more, there are no more questions in the chat. So, and um, time is fast, spent. I think we have just eight minutes more. I think somebody, uh, Mary, again, she also said something about like she wants to know what is going on in the GIS space within Africa and West Africa. And um, Mary, yes. You're welcome to know more about that. And one way to do that, or several ways to do that, but one way to do that is to belong to communities where geospatial technology and data is being discussed. You know, professionals are discussing constantly. And to do that, there are so many communities that um, you can belong to. One of them is our community here at Women in Geospatial Sub Saharan Africa. And also, there's the African Women in GIS. Uh, that Sienna is co-founder for. And um, I think we'll just drop links to that in the chat. Um, I think currently that brings us to the end of the Q&A session slash the event proper. And thank you so much for joining us. The Sienna, Aliza, it was an, it was an exhilarating, <laughs> permit me to use that word, exhilarating. <laughs> experience talking to you uh, because uh, not often do I get the opportunity to talk to RTM GIS experts from different countries. So it's really interesting for me. I know you can see the excitement on my face. <laughs> so um, yes, yeah, so that brings us to the end of this session. Um, the next thing now, okay, I think I'll just say uh, one last Baba and thank you to our speakers um, and then just go ahead to talk about some of the events, upcoming events for the Women in Geospatial Network. In case you want to join the network, these are the events to look out for. I hope you can all see my screen. I don't know if I'm still presenting, but I hope I am. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm just rushing through <laughs> to the end of. Okay. So this is the almost the last slide. So uh, Women in Geospatial Network. These are our events coming up in May, June, and July. So in case you want to join, these are the events to look towards, um, look forward to. In May, we'll be talking about three mental muscles and the concept of inner saboteurs. Oh, that's a big one. So if you want to know more about that, so please just, just join the network and then 
Okay, I think this is coming up in the Living Planet Symposium, which is coming up later in May. I think it's in person. Oh no, it's online. Personal development online. So once you join the network, you will definitely get notifications for these events for you to join them. And um, okay, so to join the network, you can join us at www.womeninjustracial.org. And you could also follow us on social media. On Twitter, we are at Geospatial Women. On LinkedIn, we are a company, Women in Geospatial. Just type it into your search bar and you'll see us there. And on YouTube, we are in um, Women in Geospatial underscore YouTube. So, um, and also there's the speaker's database, which is an amazing, um, amazing source of, you know, speakers, geospatial speakers, mostly women and underrepresented groups of, uh, you know, speakers for any of your events across different topics and all. So you can all, you can get that on the, on the Women in Geospatial um, website. And also, I think I'll also share that you can join Africa Women in GIS. Sienna, if you don't mind, you could just drop the link in the chat on how to join women, African women in GIS. So, uh, because I'm answering Mary particularly now, and I'm sure most of the other participants will be wondering, you know, the networks that you can join here in Africa for this, and you know, the two strong, very strong networks that you can join that we recommend today are these networks. So, um, if you don't mind, you could just join them. Um, yeah, so um, with the, I think that brings us to the end of, of this session. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us, to all the participants, for your questions, for your contributions, to the speakers. We say thank you to every one of you. And um, I think we'll just share. OK, yes, the website has been shared. Uh, that's. Uh, www.africawomeningis.org as well. So you can join, you can go to the website and there's a form there for you to join the network. Same also as uh, Women in Geospatial. So you should just go to www.womeningeospatial.org and you can join the network there. So um, I think that's, we're done now. And that brings us to the end. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. Uh, for myself, Nasilete, Sharon, Sienna, Aliza, we say a big thank you and um, have a lovely day, morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. And um, bye bye. Thank you. Bye. It was a privilege. Ciao. Bye.